Ladies and lentil beans, today is September 8th, 2015, and this is the Cane Kill Show, episode 256, where we learn to be better artists. I'm your host, Keenan Lafferty, and today is Tutorial Tuesday, Tuesday night. We are starting this a little bit late, and I do apologize for that, but regardless, we are jumping back into our piece with Splatiny Tooney. We're tiny, we're toony, we're all a splatoony. But before we get into that good stuff, we gotta take a stroll, uh, rather down the lovely lane. Usually we scroll up, let's scroll down today because I think we got quite a few new submissions. Look at these brilliant pieces. If you would like to go check these out for yourself, just go uh, type in that tiny URL, go like the page, get your art featured on the show, and come have a good time. Come get some cookies. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into today's tutorial, which is, I didn't even say it, line coloring, line coloring, and overpainting. All right, okay, so uh, I did try to time lapse this, but because I'm awesome and my computer crashed, we don't have the time lapse from the jump, but we will take a jump through time and space to see this is where we were last episode, and if you wanna see a little bit what we talked about, we were discussing ambient colors. Like, hey, a lot of people come up to me and say, Keenan, how can I make my character feel like it belongs in the, in the picture? How can I make it feel like the colors are interacting, mixing with what's around it? In this case, we got blue. And then I talked about how to make your shadows, basically, um, yeah, like your shadows and your colors around your characters uh, interact with the colors from around it, the ambient colors. So if you wanna check that out, go back a week Check out, I think it was like part four or whatever. And today, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about lighting. We're talking about this good stuff. So let's go ahead and take that jump See, So we started from here, we set up our palette, and then we are now here, right? Just kind of intensifying things, intensifying things. But more importantly, I'm gonna be teaching you guys a really awesome technique, and that is called line coloring. And that is basically how I go about going from this specifically, see, originally all my lines were black, or in this case, I kind of painted them like a dark blue to get started. Again, keeping in mind like our ambient colors. So let's go ahead and uh, let's actually just look at that first. Let's look at that for a second. Okay, so check this out. See, that's what color I chose for, for my lines, uh, just for the beginning, just to kind of get it started. Make it feel a little bit more at home in this blue paint. Uh, we could do something similar with the guy here. Look, let me show you guys that right now. So let's say um, you're going to begin coloring your lines. And the way that I set up my lines, you guys have seen this many times, but just in case you were curious, in case you were curious, this is how I do my lines. So basically I have all my lines right here. So here's like the lines for the guy and the splash matic But if we take away those lines, look, all we're left with is the masks and our uh, colors there, right? And our soft brush, soft brush color selection. So we put that back on and it looks oh so nice, right? It doesn't look like a demented, crazy demon creature. But let's say we wanted to begin our line coloring over here. And we wanna take our lines from what they currently are, where they're kinda of like this dark purplish. Let's go ahead and make it more of like a red to blend in a little bit more with our uh, warm color behind our guy character. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing that I would go about doing is I would pick that nice, dark red, I'm actually gonna darken it down just a little bit more, and then I do something like this. And now watch what happens. See how immediately that makes our character feel much more at home? Because basically our lines, you wanna think about them as like very, very dark shadows for the most part. Most of the time your lines do represent shadow. So in the same way that we introduced uh, our color into our shadows, right? In this case, it's a warm color, our orange, by making it like a dark red, we begin to bring it into harmony and we have a good time with that. So that's how I would get started. So just take a look at what it is that you're trying to do and what the heck happened right there? What is that? Is that some sort of weird thing with the hair? I don't know what the heck that is. Let's take a look at that. It appears that we have something going on with the guy's skin or not. Where is that? It's on the lines. I probably seriously just made that happen, didn't I? Oh, it's on the it's on the girl, okay. Ah, that's why we couldn't see it, because it's on these two layers. Okay, sorry, okay. Now that we got that taken care of, 
got to remove all blemishes from your work before you continue. Now that we got that out of the way, now what we're going to start doing is we are going to choose our soft brush. And I'm going to teach you two different ways to go about line coloring. One way, I personally like to do it this way because it just kind of gets like gets right to it, right? It gets right to it. And that is basically you have your line layer right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to click this special little button right here that you can see I'm circling with the mouse. It looks like a little checkerboard. If you click that, the way that this works is it says, okay, wherever the lines are, I will color, right? I will color the, well, in this case, we're trying to color the, the gun, which makes us really smart. But let's say like, say the tank right here. See how I can begin coloring the tank, but because I've locked the pixels with this special button, it is only going to paint where lines exist, right? Whereas if I took this off and I started painting, see how now I can paint wherever I want. So that's basically what locking the layer does, locking your pixels. And that's step one, or that's uh, technique one. Here's technique two. This is something that's a little bit more forgiving if you're going to be getting started on this. Uh, if, you're, if this is your first time line coloring, then here's what I'd suggest that you do. Make a new layer and just call it line color. And then what you wanna do is make sure that this new layer, right, line color, is above whatever your real lines are, okay? And then you're gonna hold Alt and click right between them. You'll see it changes to a different icon. Click right between those and then you'll see all of a sudden your line coloring has this amazing arrow pointing back to it. That's called a clipping mask and it's gonna help us out here. So now basically the clipping mask does the same exact thing except now you can go even more crazy. You could like take this blue and start painting the entire thing in, but say you wanted to go back to what it originally was, right? You wanna just go back to the dark lines. Well, you can just take your eraser and erase it right on back to where it was, okay? So that's the way I would suggest doing it if you're new to it, because oftentimes I really like to make my beginning lines very dark, you know, like say uh, maybe even a little darker than this. Maybe just so I can clearly see where all the lines are, and then I will start like I'll start coloring uh, things in like this. But every now and then, like I kind of jump between two, uh, both of these techniques. So you can either do the clipping mask thing, or you can just lock the pixels and go for it. But I find this one to be a little bit more. Oh, oops. I find this one to be a little bit more forgiving because you can uh, paint stuff in and erase it. All right, but for the purposes of this exercise, we're just gonna be locking the pixels because we're a pro and we never make mistakes. So let's go ahead and get into that. So the first question that I'm sure is on your mind right now is, Keenan, how do I know what color to paint the lines? How, how, what, why did you just paint that, that line dark reddish purple? Why did you do that? Well, here's what here's basically what I'm thinking about constantly as I'm doing this. And that is whatever color I'm going to be painting, whatever color the lines are, are interacting with, rather. Uh, actually, I need to go back a little bit further because I, yeah, there we go, there we go. Uh, and let's go ahead and delete that. And that, we don't need that anymore. So basically, here's the way that I think about it. So whatever, color your line is interacting with, let's say, okay, so here's our hair, right? You wanna think of it as, we talked about hue shifts yesterday. So uh, color temperature is something that is very important to keep in mind. That's a whole nother thing that we can go into another time, but basically it means, it's talking about our hue shifts. And that is the little Richter scale right here, right? Basically going from red to, look at where this goes, it goes more towards purple. And when you go from a red to a purple, it's lowering the temperature and it's creating a hue shift. Not super important that you know what that means, but the important thing is you wanna just basically think of it like this. You wanna say, okay, we have orange here, right? So the line is going to be dark orange, but rather than just dragging it down to the right, what I would also ask that you do is that you hue shift, right? Hue shift more towards uh, more reds, if you're working with oranges, right? because it just makes things look more, it, like here, here's a good example. Let, let's actually just do that. Let's take a dark orange and let me show you what it does. If you do this, then it's just brown. It just turns it brown. And do you see how that is not quite as interesting? Do you see how that kind of takes away a little bit of the liveliness that was in there before? Like see, compare that to that. See how this feels more like kind of like muddy and kind of nasty, whereas this has like more life to it. 
And that's because it has a little bit more like of a reddish glow, a little bit more of a reddish glow, and it has more, and it's doing that hue shift thing, right? So always keep that in mind. See how fun that is to see that transition right there? Like, look at this. This is what you call a yummy transition. Let's just look at this right now. Okay, so you got this, and watch. I'm going to just drag this and pull it down. Now, what I want you to look at is this little thing right here, this little Richter scale, okay? So see as I pull it down, see how it moves? It moves between yellow and red. And then as we go towards the line, see it jumps all the way. It goes for this vortex and comes out the other side, right? It's hue shifting all over the place. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is awesome. So always keep that in mind. We talked more about hue shifts and all that stuff, like color, a little bit of color theory, we were dabbling in that last week, okay? So uh, that's what I wanted to get you guys started on. Now let's go ahead and talk about skin, okay? Skin is another thing that a lot of people will ask, okay, what color, how do I know what color to paint the skin? And oftentimes I find it very beneficial to use a red, a reddish. And basically as it gets lighter, like at the lighter points, you wanna make it brighter. So here's an example of that. So just because, just because you're painting the line on the skin doesn't mean it has to be that same color all the way through the entire character. Here's the example. So check it out. So say on the edge of this knee, and it's very, very subtle. You gotta look really closely at what I'm doing here. But basically you can soften, you can begin to soften your lines more and more. Specifically, I like to do it at points that are brighter, like in here and say like under the nose and maybe a little bit in here in the mouth. See, and now what you're starting to do is you are getting a little bit more of an interesting, let me go ahead and I will duplicate this again. Getting a little bit more of an interesting composition uh, and color choice than what it used to be, which was this, right? So this is what we started with. And now we're starting to color our lines and see how it's starting to just breathe so much life back into this piece. Before it just, it's very comic booky, it's very cartoon. It feels cool, but it's not exactly the style that I like to go for. I like to have like cartoony proportions, really cool like action poses and stuff like that. But then I like to begin to soften my lines, almost make them uh, disappear in a way. Someone might not see them at first, especially if we decide to do overpainting which is going to be the next thing that we're gonna get into right now. But let me just cross off these things here on my notes. Let's go ahead and move on into the good old overpainting. Uh, and we'll start with the face, because I'm sure that's what you guys wanna see me do. I mean, that's why you showed up. I know, I'm not gonna cheat you. I'm not gonna cheat you and not, not paint the face. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm always thinking about whenever there's a line, okay? Maybe that's too early to get into that. Okay, first, let's just finish painting the rest of these lines, okay? Let's let's focus on one thing at a time here. Here we go. Okay, so let's just point, paint the rest of these lines. Nice dark reds. Dark reds. Dark reds through here. Dark reds in there. Dark reds through there. Okay, awesome. Awesome, awesome. And keep in mind, like like you can paint like into the shorts and stuff like that, but don't worry because like you can go back in there and say, okay, well maybe I want that line to be darker and then you can just go back in. Uh, oftentimes I really like the versatility of the, the soft round brush because if you wanna make it a hard brush, all you have to do is bring down the size of it and then see how now I can just affect these lines like that, see, look at that, boom. Super easy, super easy. I like that stuff. And then if you want it to be soft, you just make it bigger. So it's a very, very versatile, fun brush. Very, very fun. Another thing that I like to do to say, uh, or to soften lines, is sometimes I'll actually just grab this color and I'll lightly press down to mix that in with the line there. See how now that line is softened from there to there? Very, very cool stuff. Um, I don't do that for every single line, but if I want to just kind of, especially if I want to make a line disappear, that's usually what I start doing. I'll actually grab the color that's right next to it and I'll begin kind of painting that in. Just depends on what style you're going for. Like if you want your lines to completely disappear, then you are gonna want to do more of this grabbing like that and then you can just paint them completely away. Sort of like that, but um, that takes a little bit more practice and oftentimes like your lines won't always make a perfect shape. Like say if we painted this entire thing, yeah, it still looks like a leg, but it's kind of like, 
there's still some overpainting. There's still some treatment that you have to do to it still. You know what I'm saying? But see how that immediately makes that line disappear. And now that almost looks more realistic. So try out a bunch of different things. You know, how far do you want to push your lines? You know, I personally just like to keep them right around this area. Add some life to them, but not make them completely disappear. I'll focus more on that when I do overpainting, which we are now ready to do because I'm done sidetracking you. <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and get into that. So let's do that now. Okay, so overpainting is a very, very fun trick. It is a very fun trick. I don't like calling it a trick because it's not, it's just, it's just good, okay? It's just, it's just good. And everybody should be doing it. Everybody should be doing it. If you like, I mean, if you like this technique, just go ahead. And you know, steal my technique if you like it. I'm actually going to soften this hair as well. But see what I did there? Let, let's replay that again. I didn't explain it. I just wanted to see if you caught it, but check it out. Okay, so I grabbed that blue, that exact blue, and I lightly pressed it into those lines. And then I was like, ooh, okay, I like that color. I dropped that right there, pick it, pick it, and put it back into the rest of this hair. See? Now I have officially, now I have officially and efficiently, <laughs> efficiently and officially changed those lines. I can't remember what I said. I was meaning to say efficiently and officially, but I forget which one I said first. Okay, anyway, you know what I was saying. All right, done with that. So that's looking good too. I love it. Usually I don't do dailies this late. I feel like my energy is a little bit... Mmm, different. It's a little bit different today. I did have a good time. I went and worked out with my personal trainer. Got my butt kicked. He is convinced that I can bench my own body weight times like three times. And I was like, I don't. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a scraggly little artist. I'm a, I'm, a little, I'm a lanky little artist. I was not made to bench my own body weight. But he's convinced that he can get me there. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, that is another conversation for another time. Right now we're focusing on overpainting. So here we go. So once you've gotten your lines to a certain point where you can say, okay, I'm liking what's going on here, right? Oftentimes I like to refer back to, uh, I would highly suggest that you like duplicate your old line layer. And in this case, I just put it up front so that way I can turn it on and off. You can see how much more like the, the colors are spilling into these lines and making it look super, super awesome and just kind of compare and be like, okay, is this what I'm looking for? Is this the style that I'm looking for? Do I like these colors? And if the answer is yes, then and only then can you move on to the next part and that is overpainting. Okay, so let's go ahead and close down these lines for right now. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit Shift Control N to make a new layer and always make sure, this is imperative, that you name your overpainting layer OP because if you don't, then it's not gonna work properly. Okay, so make sure you do that and select your chalk brush, which is another imperative thing, right? If you haven't gotten my chalk brush or, or my custom brushes, they're all in the YouTube description down below. And now we're gonna begin overpainting, okay? And overpainting is basically, what I like to think of it as is that we did all the hard work already, right? We got the lines in, we've got the values in, we've got the colors in. Now what we're going to begin doing is refining, just doing slight little refinements, like little tiny cleanups. And uh, I think the best place to start is probably, hey, look at that right there on the hair. So let's go ahead and choose our, uh, we got our brush open and I'm gonna hit Alt to f grab that color right there. I'm gonna begin kind of cleaning up this edge, just cleaning up that edge, okay? And now here's where you can really begin to do something called blending the lines, blending the lines. So here's the way that I like to do it. So see how we have a clear line that's going through right here? See how we have that line going through? What I'm gonna wanna do is I'm just gonna grab these colors and I'm gonna begin blending those lines. Taking those lines, so the color still exists on that edge, but now what I'm doing is I am blending it, almost thinking of it as a gradient that goes up, right? Up towards our light, which is up here, okay? So gradient going up. So let's continue with that, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of this. Sometimes what I like to do is I'll blend right into the lines as well. A little bit of that in there. And it's gonna give you, it's gonna start to give you a bunch of different varieties 
of coloring styles and painting styles, right? Oftentimes I don't actually like to zoom in that much at the beginning. Um, I usually kind of stay like a little bit further zoomed out just for the, the beginning. But what you really wanna do is you wanna get rid of stuff like this in here. See that, like that? Well, we can get rid of that in a couple ways, right? We can, again, blend that into the rest of the piece. And then we got that. So see how our lines are still existing, but they're existing because of the contrast between this color and this color, okay? The contrast between these two points creates a line, right? So that's what you wanna be looking for, okay? So another example is, let's say, okay, well, we got the edge of the face here. We got the edge of the face, and I'm wanting to, let's say I was gonna try to obliterate this line completely, or just make it, making it much more, um, much more subtle, okay? So here's what I would do. I would say, okay, well, this line right here this line that's going up towards the edge of the face is there because of a dark. This is the dark meeting the light, the dark side meeting the light side. So what I'm gonna do is rather than push the cheek out here, rather than push the cheek out, right? Cause that's gonna totally, it's gonna give her face a different shape than it was before. I'm gonna say, okay, this is the edge of the face. And where that line occurs, I'm gonna say, okay, this is actually where the gun is going to be. And we're gonna have darkness a bit more darkness over here, okay? So I can paint a little bit of that gun back in and look at that, just from that tiny little thing. You see how now that line is much more suggested, you know, rather from there to there. It's a tiny little change, but you go about doing, you go through the entire picture and do that now and you start making your lines. You almost wanna think about it as making your lines smaller, like thinner, you know? But again, you can choose to do it this way. You can make your lines thinner, you can make them completely disappear, or you can keep them in there if you like a little bit more of that cartoony, kind of thicker line look. I tend to like it a little bit. I tend to like the, the more um, kind of thicker line type of thing. Um, I mean, in some areas, not, not through the entire piece. Uh, actually, maybe I'm more of like a thin line kind of guy. Yeah, I'm probably more of a thin line kind of guy. I take back what I said. <laughs> thin lines all the way. So if you like that and you want to replicate my style and you dig it, then do those thin lines. Another thing that I like to do is I like to say, okay, well, let's go in and start refining some extra lights. So you see how I put that extra light on the edge of that uh, hair there. You know, I'm thinking, okay, well, if this line is coming from the top, or if the light is coming from the top down, right? If it's coming from the top down, Probably gonna get a little bit kind of caught right there, maybe a little bit right there, and going up through there. So I'm also adding in some details. I'm also adding in details of my overpainting layer, which is also completely fine. Completely fine, you don't need to ask permission. Just go ahead and do it. And uh, speaking of that, uh, this is a great place, this is a great time to have our example of overpainting up here because as you know, for those of you who play Splatoon, the characters have these tentacles and they have these really cool designs on the tips of them. But then more importantly, we want these tentacles to appear shiny, almost like wet, right? Like they're fresh from under the sea, right? So let's make sure that we show that with a specular, okay? So here's how we're gonna do our specular. You wanna think about, I mean, our light's gonna be very kind of like, you wanna stay away from going completely white personally. Like if you notice, like if you click this, you'd be like, oh, it's white. No, it's actually just a very, very, it's pulled to the right and it's a very bright yellow, okay? I try to stay away from going to completely white all the time, okay? So uh, I actually really like that color. Let's just go ahead and take that color. And now here's a prime example of your OP layer. You can begin to do things like this. You can start putting in, oh, look at that, a nice little specular. Actually, I'm gonna put that on another layer because I did, I did some other overpainting there. Here's another thing that I like to do is you can do more than one overpainting layer, okay? Try out a couple different uh, speculars. Maybe you want one that looks like that. Maybe you want a couple of them so it looks more like that, you know? Just play around with a couple different things. See if you can get the style that you're looking for. Maybe you want it, and always like zoom out to make sure that you're getting kind of the, the feel that you're looking for. And I feel like this already needs to be a little bit more exaggerated. So we're gonna want something a little bit more like, like that, yeah. Yeah, I like that, I like it. Yeah, I'll have to figure that out a little bit more. But anyway, okay, so continuing. Also, we'll have like, say, a little specular right there, a little one right there, 
you know, just little speculars that give us that kind of moist look, a nice moist look that we're looking for. Okay, have a little one right there as well. And let's go back to our other OP layer because I do want to soften this line right here. I do want to blend this into the rest of the tentacle here because I really like this color. Like this whole transition from like the yellow to the orange is so tasty. That's what you call a tasty transition, okay? So I'm also gonna add a little bit more intensity to this, right? By dropping a little bit of yellow behind it. Now see, look at what I'm doing there. See how I'm adding a little bit more intensity to that specular? Specular is on its own layer, but see, I'm just adding a little bit more yellow in it. Um, it gives it more of an effect that it is more like spilling out. And this has to do with color temperature. Again, another thing that we can go into another time, but for now, You'll just have to look up another. <laughs> Actually, I did do a, 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 um, a tutorial on that a long time ago. But for now, I mean, so many people have taught it and it's pretty dang easy. Uh, color temperature is another big thing um, that you should have as part of your arsenal. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about as I'm going in here, doing a little bit of that, right? Overpainting, throwing in those speculars, making it look good, thinning my lines thinning my lines and getting a nice, good look. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. Look at that tasty hair. Yummy. All right. So you can begin to see from where we started. You know, we went from here to here. Slight changes, slight changes, yeah? But really, I like I stand by what I said earlier. It's like by the time you get here, by the time you get to the the lines having been colored, you've done probably about 90% of the work. The last 10% is really gonna be up to you. The finishing touches that you wanna put onto it, speculars, uh, additional details, thinning the lines, uh, blending the lines, you can do all that stuff here. But really more than, oh, and I said I was gonna do the face, don't worry, don't worry, I didn't forget. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> now I totally forgot what I was gonna say. But most importantly, is that, uh, oh yeah, whenever you feel like you're kind of stuck on something, right? Whenever you feel like you kind of get stuck, like you're like, oh, I don't know if I wanna make these lines like thinner or I wanna make it disappear. Really understand that the most important thing is that you just stay consistent, stay very consistent. If you're doing thin line, then do thin lines all around, okay? If you're doing no line, then you gotta do no lines basically like throughout the entire thing, you know? A good example of this is probably more like Lulu, what we did with Lulu. Um, which was the last piece that we worked on. That was a, a good mix of like thin line and no line. Uh, or like hidden, hidden line, crouching tiger hidden line. That's what I'll call that technique. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about the face specifically because there is one more thing that I wanna leave you with before we end today. And that is, again, don't worry so much about like, okay, here's a nose but now it's time to make it look realistic. So we need to like put this nostril in there and like do this and yeah, like repainting everything. Like don't, don't do this, okay? Because it's gonna make your characters look a little scary if you try to render them too much, okay? That's what I'm talking about. You did all the hard work already, okay? Like the reason you like this is because you drew the line, you colored the line and you like the colors, okay? So what you wanna do rather is you want to say, okay, well, this is a nice color here. I like all these colors, but now what I wanna do is more refine this shape. Let's refine this shape and refine these colors. So let's kind of trim away that little thing there. Uh, let's like really define the edge of this nose like that. Let's refine the edge of this eyeball, you know, and really you're just cleaning things up. You're cleaning, okay? But you already did most of the hard work, or you should have, you should have if you, Followed my directions. And if you didn't, then shame on you. Shame on you. But you should have done the hard work already. And really what this is all about is cleaning, cleaning up all those little tiny edges there. Cleaning up those edges. And if you do that, you'll have a good time. And if you don't, then you'll have a terrible time. No, I don't know. But know that this will take a little bit of time. And um, yeah, really once you get to this point, the hard work's been done. And the most important part is that you just relax. You just gotta, Relax, okay? Don't stress, don't stress, okay? And clean up those lines, make it look good, and you'll have a uber, uber fun time. 
Ooh, I like that. That looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. But that's basically how I'm gonna go about doing this. And next week, it's gonna be all done. It's gonna be all pretty. And we're gonna have ourselves a nice splatoony piece. A nice splatoony piece. And we're gonna have some fun with that. So that's how I'd go about cleaning up this face. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's take away the OP. See that? Look, tiny little changes that are happening through here. But you do that to the whole piece and then people are gonna look at it and be like, how did you get so good? How did you do, how did you paint that? They're not gonna understand, They're not, but you'll know the secret. You will know the secret and I just told it to you. All righty people, so with that, yeah, I'm gonna call that good. And uh, for those of you who wanna see this PSD close up, don't worry because I'm gonna upload it to the Patreon. And if you don't know what that is, click that freaking link right there because it's awesome. All right, and speaking of awesome, I do have one more thing to announce before we end today. And that is that, well, I, I mean, it's kind of announced, but it's more of a thank you. Thank you guys so much for getting us to 870. We are so close. If uh, one of you goes on there and wants to support and get a PSD, then the next episode after we finish Splatoon is going to be on the Night Raven Fiora visual update and the concepts I did for that, going in depth on the stuff that I did for Riot. I know you guys want it, so go do it. Go do it. Go check it out. All right, and with that, we are going to go ahead and end. But before we do that, one last thing. i got to say thank you to my awesome sponsors, the defenders of the Cancale Kingdom, David Chiariello and Laura Bashir. Uh, yes, and uh, I did always want to be an opera singer. That's kind of what I do in my, my spare time, you know. I'm pretty good, I know. I'm pretty good. But I think I'll stick with my day job for now. Alrighty, people. So thank you for joining me on YouTube. For those of you watching, if you liked it, thumbs up. If you like it, thumbs down. If you don't, my name is Ken Lafferty. I'll see you guys on Thursday for a good old thoughtful. And until then, uh, check out the PSD and... Don't forget to color those lines. Color those lines. Soften them up. Breathe life into your drawing. Breathe new life into your drawings. And you will have a great time. Can't wait to see your guys' artwork on the Facebook. New stuff doing line coloring. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. Until then, take care. Coloring lines, 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 over paint!